All right, uh, welcome to my lightning talk. My name is Connor Hoekstra, and I go by code underscore reports on the socials. I have a YouTube channel, Twitter. This is my About Me page. I'm not going to go through it because I don't have time. Most importantly, though, at one point, Haskell was my favorite language, even though I'm a professional C++ developer. Um, Something I'm going to note very quickly, I have a few podcasts. Um, I'm going to be in the breaks and at lunch interviewing folks. If you want to be on the podcast, come and find me. I'll have an interview mic. And if you want to look at any of the stuff that I do on YouTube, talks, etc., you can find it at a GitHub uh, repo called content. All right, on to the talk. So we're going to solve a very simple problem in three different programming languages, and that is just filtering in the odds given a list of integers. So if you start with a list of 1 to 5, you're going to end up with 1, 3, 5. Pretty straightforward. Hope you're all keeping up. But we're going to go very quickly. So uh, yeah, hang on. So first, we're going to start with C++. This is a C++ 14 solution. We're just declaring an empty vector and then pushbacking our odd elements. This is C++ 14 because we're using a C++ 14 feature called function deduce return type. We're also using, using C++ 11 features like auto and range base 4. We're going to upgrade as we go along, though. This is not a very nice solution because you're not making use of an algorithm. My preferred solution is using a C++ 98 copy if. Here, we're making use of a C++ 11 lambda. It's not as nice as Haskell's and many functional programming languages. Languages, but we got them in C++11. Actually, though, I lied. This is a C++14 lambda because we're making use of the auto keyword in the parameter list. We're going to keep going to C++20 because we got the range overload of the copy if algorithm. So on the previous slide, we were passing two iterators, nums begin and nums end to divine our range. But in C++20, we got range overload, so you can pass the vector directly. This is a lot nicer. But also in C++20, we got C++20 ranges, which is kind of inspired by stream fusion and other, uh, other libraries like Haskell and sort of Java 8 streams. So basically, we can now actually make a call to a function called filter, pass it a lambda that checks if it's odd, then we're done. However, the reason that I fell in love with Haskell is because in Haskell, we can do the following. This isn't even as nice as we can get in Haskell, because I'm sure some of you Haskell programmers are thinking, why not just use the odd predicate? And now some of you are thinking, why not just do the point-free version? And now some of you are thinking, why even have a function here? It's basically just the name of our function that we had. This is why I love Haskell. I mean, I get paid to know all that C++ knowledge, but when I learned Haskell, I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? Uh, but in the last couple minutes of our talk here, we are going to be uh, looking at the BQN language. So very quickly, I'm going to live code the first solution to this. So we're going to work work up to this, but uh, BQN is a Unicode language inspired by APL. It's basically APL plus Fibonacci. So here, this is the range function. We pass it 5. It gives us a sequence from 0 to uh, zero 4. We add 1 to that. We get 1 to 5. Now we're going to build up our function. So this is just basically the identity function. It takes a single argument x and returns it to you. First thing we want to do, because we don't actually have filter in BQN, is we want to build up a mask of Booleans. That's 1s and zeros, And this is just the two modulus function. And then once we have that, we can use this with a function called replicate. And we use that to basically filter out uh, the even elements and keep the odds. So this is BQN. Uh, this is all in the browser at a website called BQN Pad. Uh, if you don't know about this website called Compiler Explorer, this is all my C++ code running in the browser. And this started in C++ land, but it has like every single language you could possibly think of. So you can see here, if you want to run your Haskell code in the browser, look at the disassembly and execute it. That's all possible. CompilerExplorer.org. Quick plug for that website. Back to my slides. So we're going to look at three different solutions in BQN. So this is the one that we just looked at. Absolutely beautiful. We can make it point free, though. Even more beautiful, this is the icon combined with the F combinator. I'm not going to describe that. Don't have time. We're going to have another solution. This is once going back to an explicit solution. It uses the W combinator. Point free version of this one is here. That's the phi combinator. Another phi combinator. I combinator. W combinator. I combinator. We love it. Absolutely beautiful. If you like this, go, go check out my talk. That's going to be online at some point about combinator programming. This is the solution that we looked at before. But we can actually make it more beautiful by using the sigma combinator, which doesn't exist in any other programming, programming language. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, check Check out all this stuff if you're interested in this at combinatorylogic.com or BQMPad, try PL. Uh, that's my talk. Thank you. <laughs>